Hello guys, Charles here, welcome back to my channel. So I got a comment this week from a chap called Bruno. Now Bruno apparently is preparing for an audition for a music school in Argentina, which sounds very exciting. Now I don't know a huge amount about Bruno, uh, what age the music school is or anything like that, but I do know that he's got to prepare Tenor Madness. Now Tenor Madness is essentially a 12 bar blues and it's a very common audition task to be asked to play a blues or a simple standard. When I auditioned about 15 years ago for Berklee College of Music, I had to do it then. And so I thought I'd share some of my insights and tips for how to play over a blues, especially in a, an audition environment, which is a very difficult environment to play in. So I want to start with the most important point, which is to keep it really, really simple. In an audition environment, when you are feeling nervous and excited and worried and all these feelings, it's very tempting to just go on autopilot and see what happens. Now, although that works great for some of us, What's a better approach, I think, is just to focus on small, concise expressions, musical phrases. Do not try and play a full-on jazz blues, bebop style, where you're hitting every single chord change. It's hard at the best of times, let alone in an audition scenario. So what we can do as guitarists very comfortably, especially, you know, in our mid to late teens, we're probably not hugely developed musically yet. I certainly wasn't. So why don't we just stick to what we know best? Now, what most of us know best at that age is more of a rock blues or a blues blues rather than a jazz blues. Now, Tenor Madness, which is the specific tune Bruno asked about, is pretty much a 12-bar blues with a tiny bit of jazz blues at the end, but it's essentially just a 12-bar blues. So what we can do is stick to our pentatonics. We know pentatonics, we're guitarists, we know those very nicely. Use your rock and blues licks that you know and don't try and become a bebop player all of a sudden. I remember thinking that now I'm into jazz, blues and rock language, that's lame, man. No, it's cool, and lots of jazz players who are less familiar with the rock and blues language, they'll love those ideas. So stick to the stuff you know. For me, it was Slash, Gary Moore, Jimmy Page, um, Joe Perry, B.B. King. All these guys who I just, I just loved their playing. Uh, just stick to those ideas. Pinch your favorite licks try them out. So in terms of specifics, for Tenor Madness, we start on a B flat seven chord. It's, it's a blues in B flat. So stick to a more dominant pentatonic sound. Two ways of going about that. You can use a major pentatonic with a couple of bends or a minor pentatonic with a couple of bends. But we're after this sort of sound. So I'm essentially just thinking of the first position minor pentatonic there. And I'm just putting a couple of bends. Just to hit those slightly bluesy notes, get that minor third bending up to the major third. trying anything too jazzy, not showing off, I'm just sticking to what I know. When I hit the E flat chord, which is in bar two, it's got... That bar there. What we can do on a dominant chord, so this is E flat seven, we can play a minor pentatonic on its fifth. So E flat, the fifth of E flat is B flat. So we can play B flat minor pentatonic. Well, we were just playing a B flat minor pentatonic with a few bends on the B flat seven. So we can, we can now just get rid of those bends and we can, we can have this sort of sound. As soon as I introduce them. we know that we're back on the B flat seven. So the first four bars would sound something like this. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, I went actually into the fifth bar there as well, but the fifth bar is another E flat, so. We can stick to B flat minor pentatonic. And in fact, that's what Sonny Rollins did with the tune we've got. Mm -hmm. 
this move from the major third to the minor third. Now they've both also got G in them, which is the sixth. So it might be nice to make sure that you add the sixth into your pentatonic as well. And then into your minor. So all I'm using there is the minor pentatonic with the G in it as well. The G lives on the eighth fret here on the B string. And we can have the G there. And the dominant sound is achieved by bending the thirds or replacing them with D natural. And the sixth there, that G, bends up nicely a semitone. So I can get lovely sounds there just using slight modifications to what we already know, which is the minor pentatonic. So adding the sixth in there and bending the thirds. So I'd stick to that for the one and the four chord. Now, when we get nearer the end, we've got this slightly different phrase of the melody, which sounds like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So that was bars nine and 10, and we can hear that it's quite significantly more jazzy sounding than the rest of the head. So what we want to make sure that we've got is a few set pieces that hit bars 9 and 10 really, really nicely. Slightly more of a bebop approach. What I do with my Zoom lessons at the minute, because obviously I'm not able to work in schools for the time being, is I'll get my students to write solos in their lessons. We'll come up with some vocabulary and the more complex vocabulary becomes their practice routine for the week. So it's probably a good idea for you to, between now and whenever your audition is, to write some blues heads. If you were to write out a really nicely constructed solo over a 12 bar blues every day between now and your audition and just keep your favourite ideas from each, you'd have a really great trick bag. That was in fact apparently what Sonny Rollins did. He keeps diaries and journals of all of his ideas and he has tens and tens and tens, probably hundreds now, of these journals in his practice room that he can go back and refer to. So take a leaf out of one of Sonny's practice books and write some solos yourself and use that as vocabulary. Now in terms of the specifics on that G7 chord, again we can just use stuff we know. That same minor pentatonic with the bends is going to fit really nicely on G7. Then in the final few bars when we have C minor 7 followed by F7, we ignore the C minor 7, just treat it as an F7. And again on that F7, we can stick to what we know. Just a bluesy sounding pentatonic. So that's the soloing out of the way. Keep it simple, just work on simple ideas using your pentatonics. However, something that certainly didn't occur to me when I was preparing for my audition was to make sure that I can play the rhythm part as well so that I've got some nice comping ideas, again, just nice and simple through a blues. So just working on, again, sticking primarily to shapes you know, you shouldn't need to be learning any new chord vocabulary really, but make sure you've got a few nice dominant seven chord shapes and that you can move nicely through the slightly jazzier bit at the end with the G7 and the 2, 5, 1. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2 variations on some comping patterns for, for a 12 bar blues. Nothing groundbreaking there at all, but I'm just really making sure that I'm hitting those chord changes. So in my audition I played with one of the examiners who was a saxophonist, and so I played both a solo 
and an accompanying part for him to solo over. When you are doing a duet, a great tip from Gary Burton, vibes player, is really try and listen to the other player. If you can get some rehearsal with someone else before your audition, that would be even better. When you are comping, you should be able to describe the solo you just heard after the fact. So if someone was to say, what well, stop there, talk me through roughly what the saxophone player just did, most of us would go, uh, oh, I don't know, I was thinking about my chords. Yeah, I, I still do that now. We should be listening so closely to what the soloist is doing that our comping can't possibly get in their way. So really listen to what the other members of the group are doing. Obviously, not in all auditions you will be playing with someone else. It might just be you to a backing track or you by yourself. Another thing which, looking back on my own experiences with auditions, is to make sure that you know some blues is, you know some heads on blues. If you've been given a specific example, like in this case, um, Bruno was asked to learn Tenor Madness, then that's great, you've got something that you know what's coming. But you're probably going to be asked to play a blues, and they might say, which blues do you want to play? Well, in that case, you need to know, oh, let's play Tenor Madness or any other blues that you like, it doesn't matter what it is, but you need to have some blueses learned. Make a point of, between now and your audition, learning some other blueses. Doesn't matter what they are, but make sure that you know some, because just breaking down the way that those heads were constructed is gonna teach you a lot about playing over the chord progression. But also, you might just be asked, let's play a blues, and the examiner might say, which blues do you wanna play? And so it shows that you're well read if you can say, oh, let's play Tenor Madness, for example, it shows that you've, you've got a kind of a tool bag of a few blueses. And of course, a jazz musician does need to know some blueses. And the final point is, as lame as this one sounds, is to enjoy it yourself. There is nothing worse than sitting and watching someone who's just clearly suffering. It's horrible. So if you can sit there and just play a couple of heads of a blues and look like you're enjoying it, look like you're getting really into it, then whoever's watching you is going to think, oh, this is someone that I want on my course. This is someone who's going to get other people into it. You know, they're, they're bringing the right energy. A lot of people, uh, especially, you know, in, in our mid to late teens, there's, there's kind of an awkwardness there, an uncomfortableness that I remember my first few years of university. Uh, no one was willing to, like, just do stuff. And I was, I was you know, really keen to, to get in and, like, play some solos and like just jam man and everyone was just a little bit awkward and uncomfortable so make sure that that isn't you and that you're kind of a, a, a coming across as a go-getter someone who wants to play uh, someone who's there for the right reasons and is going to inspire other students there's absolutely nothing wrong if you are someone who's a little bit more reserved or uncomfortable playing with others however if there's someone that can really sort of inspire you um lift you up a little bit that's really nice and if you can be that person then I think if certainly if I was an examiner and I saw that in someone I thought they're really getting into this even if they're not you know hitting every single chord change or whatever it is then I'd still want them on my course they're going to bring something so I hope you found that useful whoever you are and uh, Bruno in particular I hope there was a, a few insights there that you can use just to wrap it all up stick to what you know just pentatonics is absolutely great and it sounds cool. Jerry Bergonzi and McCoy Tyner made a whole career in jazz out of pentatonics. So it's certainly not the case that now that you are thinking about being a jazz musician, you need seven, eight and nine note scales. Don't fall into that trap. Stick to pentatonics. They're absolutely great. A few bends on the dominant ones and adding the six in is pretty cool. Make sure you've got some comping patterns down. You might need to accompany someone else in your audition. As a guitarist, we are supposed to be able to do both things. Write some solos and learn some heads so that if you're asked to play a blues, you've got a few in your pocket that you can call. And finally, get into it, like enjoy it, act like you know what you're doing, exude confidence, and you are an attractive uh, customer for the, the, the college or university or whatever it is. If you bring the correct energy, uh, it's gonna really have a knock on effect on everyone else. And that's a good thing for them to see. So if you are preparing for an audition, the very best of luck. Leave me a comment down below. Any help or advice you need at all, just ask. I'm always happy to make content to help you guys out or I will sit there typing all evening if it helps you out. That's no trouble at all. If you did find this one useful, please do give it a like, subscribe, ding that notification bell 
and share with any of your friends who might also be working on a blues for their auditions. And as always, I hope you're all doing very well, getting plenty of practice in, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Roll up, roll up, let me embed a story you'll never forget. A drip, drip, a drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out. And